Air Chapter 4, Class 7. Our Earth is surrounded by a huge blanket of air called atmosphere. All living beings on this Earth depend on the atmosphere for their survival. It provides us the air we breathe and protects us from the harmful effects of the sun's rays. Without this blanket of protection, we would be baked alive by the heat of the sun during day and get frozen during night. So it is this mass of air that has made the temperature on the Earth livable. Composition of the atmosphere Do you know that the air we take in while breathing is actually a mixture of many gases? Nitrogen and oxygen are two gases which make up the bulk of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, helium, ozone, argon and hydrogen are found in lesser quantities. Apart from these gases, tiny dust particles are also present in the air. Nitrogen is the most plentiful gas in the air. When we inhale, we take some amount of nitrogen into our lungs and exhale it. But plants need nitrogen for their survival. They cannot take nitrogen directly from the air. Bacteria, that live in the soil and roots of some plants. Take nitrogen from the air and change its form so that plants can use it. Oxygen is the second most plentiful gas in the air. Humans and animals take oxygen from the air as they breathe. Green plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis. In this way oxygen content in the air remains constant. If we cut trees then this balance gets disturbed. Carbon dioxide is another important gas. Green plants use carbon dioxide to make their food and release oxygen. Humans or animals release carbon dioxide. The amount of carbon dioxide released by humans or animals seems to be equal to the amount used by the plants which make a perfect balance. However, the balance is upset by burning of fuels, such as coal and oil. They add billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. As a result, the increased volume of carbon dioxide is affecting the Earth's weather and climate. Structure of the atmosphere Our atmosphere is divided into five layers starting from the Earth's sore face. These are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Troposphere. This layer is the most important layer of the atmosphere. Its average height is 13 kilometers. The air we breathe exists here. Almost all the weather phenomena like rainfall, fog and hailstorm occur in this layer. Stratosphere. Above the troposphere lies the stratosphere. It extends up to a height of 50 kilometers. This layer is almost free from clouds and associated weather phenomenon, making conditions most ideal for flying aeroplanes. One important feature of stratosphere is that it contains a layer of ozone gas. We have just learnt how it protects us from the harmful effect of the sun rays. Mesosphere. This is the third layer of the atmosphere. It lies above the stratosphere. It extends up to the height of 80 kilometers. Meteorites burn up in this layer on entering from the space. Thermosphere. In thermosphere temperature rises very rapidly with increasing height. Ionosphere is a part of this layer. It extends between 80 to 400 kilometers. This layer helps in radio transmission. In fact, radio waves transmitted from the Earth are reflected back to the Earth by this layer. Exosphere. The uppermost layer of the atmosphere is known as exosphere. This layer has very thin air. Light gases like helium and hydrogen float into the space from here. Weather is this hour-to-hour, day-to-day condition of the atmosphere. A hot or humid weather may make one irritable. A pleasant, breezy weather may make one cheerful and even plan for an outing. Weather can change dramatically from day to day. However, the average weather condition of a place for a longer period of time represents the climate of a place. Now do you understand why we have daily weather forecasts? The temperature you feel every day is the temperature of the atmosphere. The degree of hotness and coldness of the air is known as temperature. The temperature of the atmosphere changes not only between day and night but also from season to season. Summers are hotter than winters. An important factor that influences the distribution of temperature is insulation. Insulation is the incoming solar energy intercepted by the Earth. The amount of insulation decreases from the equator towards the poles. Therefore, the temperature decreases in the same manner. Now do you understand why poles are covered with snow? If the Earth's temperature rises too high, 
it would become too warm for some crops to grow. Temperature in cities is much higher than that of villages. The concrete and metals in buildings and the asphalt of roads get heated up during the day. This heat is released during the night. Also, the crowded high-rise buildings of the cities trap the warm air and thus raise the temperature of the cities. Air pressure. You will be surprised to know that air above us presses us with a great force on our bodies. However, we don't even feel it. This is because the air presses us from all directions and our body exerts a counter pressure. Air pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by the weight of air on the Earth's surface. As we go up the layers of atmosphere, the pressure falls rapidly. The air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height. Horizontally the distribution of air pressure is influenced by temperature of air at a given place. In areas where temperature is high the air gets heated and rises. This creates a low pressure area. Low pressure is associated with cloudy skies and wet weather. In areas having lower temperature, the air is cold. It is therefore heavy. Heavy air sinks and creates a high pressure area. High pressure is associated with clear and sunny skies. The air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. Wind the movement of air from high pressure area to low pressure areas is called wind. You can see wind at work as it blows dry leaves down the pavement or uproots trees during a storm. Sometimes when the wind blows gently you can even see it blowing away smoke or fine dust. At times wind can be so strong that it is difficult to walk against it. You must have experienced it is not easy to hold an umbrella on a windy day. Think of some other examples when strong winds have created problems for you. Winds can be broadly divided into three types. Permanent winds the trade winds, westerlies and easterlies are the permanent winds. These blow constantly throughout the year in a particular direction. Seasonal winds these winds change their direction in different seasons. For example monsoons in India. Local winds these blow only during a particular period of the day or year in a small area. For example, land and sea breeze. Do you recall the hot and dry local wind of northern plains of India? It is called loo. Moisture when water evaporates from land and different water bodies, it becomes water vapor. Moisture in the air at any time, is known as humidity. When the air is full of water vapor we call it a humid day. As the air gets warmer, its capacity to hold the water vapor increases and so it becomes more and more humid. On a humid day, clothes take longer to dry and sweat from our body does not evaporate easily, making us feel very uncomfortable. When the water vapor rises, it starts cooling. The water vapor condenses causing formation of droplets of water. Clouds are just masses of such water droplets. When these droplets of water become too heavy to float in air, then they come down as precipitation. Jet planes flying in the sky leave a white trail behind them. The moisture from their engines condenses. We see trails of this condensed moisture for some time when there is no air movement to disturb it. Precipitation that comes down to the earth in liquid form is called rain. Most of the groundwater comes from rainwater. Plants help preserve water. When trees on hillsides are cut, Rainwater flows down the bare mountains and can cause flooding of low-lying areas. On the basis of mechanism, there are three types of rainfall. The convectional rainfall, the orographic rainfall and the cyclonic rainfall. Rainfall is very important for the survival of plants and animals. It brings fresh water to the Earth's surface. If rainfall is less, water SCA city and drought occur. On the other hand if it is more, floods take place. Cyclone the Nature's Fury. Odisha, located on the eastern seacoast of India is prone to cyclones that originate in the Bay of Bengal. On the 17th to the 18th of October 1999, cyclone hit five districts of the state. Another supercyclone occurred on the 29th of October 1999, that devastated large portions of the state. The damages caused were mainly due to three factors wind velocity, rain and tidal surge. The winds of up to 260 kilometers. These high velocity winds uprooted trees and damaged the Kutcher houses. Rooftops of several industrial sheds and other houses were also blown away. 
power supply and telecom lines snapped completely. Heavy rain occurred under the influence of the cyclone for three days continuously. These rains led to flooding in the major rivers of Odisha. The cyclonic winds caused tidal waves that swept 20 kilometers inland and brought massive destruction to the coastal areas. The 7 to 10 meters high tidal wave intruded suddenly and caused massive damage to the standing paddy crops. Do you recall the hot and dry local wind of northern plains of India? It is called Lu. Inquire further about Lu and ask your teacher about it.